Hey, everybody. Uh, hey, everybody. Adam Savage in my cave uh, with a friend request. I was having dinner with my friend Tracy the other day, and Tracy was telling me, Tracy, you might remember from the uh, cat wheel video, Tracy Desjardins, uh, we fixed her large four foot diameter cat wheel for her ludicrously active and insanely beautiful cats a few years ago. Uh, there's a link in the description. Anyway, I was having dinner with Tracy and she said that her bed squeaks and that uh, they localized the problem to the hardware of the bed. And I thought it was, uh, I'm gonna fix this for her because they ordered new hardware and she asked me, how do I stop it from squeaking? She said, I expect that it'll fix the squeaking in the beginning, but that if the hardware is built the same way as the old hardware, the squeaking is gonna show up again. <clears throat> and it's literally like waking them up when one gets up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and that's no good. So how do you stop the bed from squeaking? Well, beds are, you, beds are an interesting engineering uh, structure because uh, they are very much, uh, in industrial beds exploit our weight for stability. That is, if you've ever tried to lift a modern bed and had it all twisty on you, because it doesn't like, beds are like cats. They don't, they don't like being in another orientation. Um, <clears throat> And the reason is really specifically because of this, and this is very much how beds are built all over on an industrial scale. Uh, this is a uh, this is half of the hardware. Uh, so a bed is uh, 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 four parts. There's a, a head and a foot, and then there's two rails that go between them. That is almost every bed in the world. And on the ends of the rails, the two long rails that go up the bed, uh, on each end is something like this, uh, a little piece of metal that screws into the rail and fits into two corresponding slots. And if you can see here, there you go. So the slots are made out of the same metal and you can see it doesn't quite go all the way up in there and that's by design, the slot this will go through the slot. I'm sorry, I don't have the slot. You're just gonna have to picture it in your head. The slot will go, this will go through the slot like this. And then because it's the same amount of metal, the same size of metal, the slot will end up providing a wedge fit that this will, as you lie down on it, it drives these parts together, right? It's like your weight, gravity is what provides stability. A really terrific, uh, example of gravity-induced stability are traveling masseuse tables. Uh, my ex-wife was a masseuse and had a, a, a massage table, and they are marvels of engineering because they're light enough for a person to carry, and then when you unfold them, a series of spindly legs and thin cables yield this absolutely rock-solid structure as long as you're standing on it. Um, that's a terrific example of a, a, of a gravity enhanced, of a, a structure that gravity enhances its strength. So <clears throat> let's talk about industrial automation and uh, parts. These, these metal tabs, these, these uh, pill-shaped long pieces of metal, these are stamped. And actually you can see the edge artifacts of their stamping, um, they're punched. So there's a punch that is this shape and a corresponding hole that is this shape and a sheet piece of sheet metal goes across and a punch, tunk, punches out these plates. Uh, and then these countersinks, they don't even look like they're drilled. They look like they're also punched or something. Uh, yeah, it's hard for me to tell whether they're, here, let's give you, let's give you some B-roll. All right, so here we go. So this edge detailing, that is uh, really clear evidence that it has been punched and not cut. Um, yeah, you can kind of see that sort of dividing line. That's like, yeah, so this, there's a hole that is this shape and a punch that is also this shape minus just a tiny bit. And it comes down and punches it out of the sheet metal. And then the same thing goes for these little ears. The ones that, uh, the ones that will wedge into the slot on the other side of the bed. Um, these ears are also punched and 
you can see that they're punched. Uh, this is another evidence of punching that that rounded top and the flat bottom. Um, it was punched from this side out of the metal. Am I right about that? It could be that it's punched out of the side. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm actually not sure which side it's punched out on. So sorry, I don't have that institutional knowledge. Hey. When you want the deep institutional dive into this kind of thing, you can go to AVE. That's not what I know how to do. But so uh, these little ears are also punched. And um, why do they squeak? Well, because these aren't welded together. They are not welded together. So what happens is, is this is punched and it has a little tab on it, a little tab. And you can see, you can see the end of the little tab. Oh, you can see the end of the little tab there. And that comes up through a hole here. And it's a little bit proud. That is, it's probably about 50 thou taller than the receiving plate. And to attach them permanently, side note, can I tell you the, one of the great jokes that my partner, uh, Mrs. Don't Try This, Julia, came, up, came out with? Uh, when we were first dating, it's like third, fourth date, where we're completely uh, over the moon about each other already by the third or fourth date. And um, I want to say something pithy and funny. And so we're out at a, a, a bar in Berkeley that uh, has board games and we're playing some board games. And I said, you know... I've been doing this with my air quotes forever, but I was actually thinking of switching to this instead of this. I just feel like this is more, <laughs> has more conversational weight than this. And Julia goes, oh, you're switching from serif to sans serif air quotes. <laughs> I love that. One of my favorite jokes ever. Yeah, uh, I'll never be that funny. Anyway, um, so uh, these are these uh, little uh, leaves, tabs, ears are attached to the base plate per permanently uh, by a machine that comes by and goes. <laughs> it's effectively like a pressure rivet. It's not a. These are not one thing. When you weld something, you are making two things into one thing, into one actual material. You are joining materials. That's why a weld bond glue is called a weld bond because it melts both sides and brings them together. And steel welding, aluminum welding, all that does the same thing. This is not welding. This is uh, riveting, but like a notch down from riveting. And so over time, that connection can loosen. That's. I understand how late stage capitalism works. I'm still endlessly disappointed by it. Uh, so we're gonna fix this for Tracy. Um, and we're gonna do it, uh, we're gonna do it actually in a pretty simple, fast, straightforward way. Um, I'm gonna weld it. But I'm not just gonna weld directly across that because uh, when you weld, you actually If you take two things like, uh, let's see. I can, draw. I can draw on a piece of paper. So when you have two objects, like this, and you want to weld them, uh, it is certainly doable to weld like that but you're, the weld's only gonna go down to about there and maybe down to about there. And that's, do you see the problem with this? You're adding some structure, but it's like a false, it's like a false structure. Let me show you how you really wanna do it. So when you're welding two bars together, what you really wanna do is you really want to, um, you really want to cut out, you want to grind out a chamfer like this. And so you have that space. And then when you weld into it, 
you end up with a weld that comes down like that. And to be fair, like when they build submarines and stuff, that chamfer goes like deep and those welds are many. It's not just one, it's like four, five, six. I don't know how many welds they do plate to plate, but you, you understand like, right? So we're just, we're getting a lot more strength out of this equation because we're bringing the weld farther towards the center of the bar. And the more strength you want, the, the deeper you grind and the more you fill. Um, that's the theory of welding, right? So this is what, this is, whenever you read about like an industrial act, I am not going to predict why industrial accidents happen. I'm only gonna say this is a beginning welder's mistake and this is an experienced welder's. And please don't come to this channel for your welding advice. I'm merely giving this as context for how to think about welding. There are welders out there I literally, I am not a welder, I have a welder. I own a MIG welder, which is just like a glue gun that sprays steel, and I look up the settings and I, you know, follow what it says. And I've been doing that for 35 years, and it's been working fine for me, but I am not a welder. I'm not certified. I All the stuff about metals for this, this is this is literally like the, the most basic first day learnings of welding. But uh, I point this out to talk about how I'm gonna solve this problem because if I just weld it over the top of this, um, I still end up with a structure in which there's an attachment down here, but this still has a lot of leverage with which to rock against this. And that's already the problem, is the amount of pressure happening and the repeated movement, it's causing this to slowly work itself loose. And if I weld on the bottom there, I'm, I'm, I'm welding at the farthest point from the end of the lever arm here, and I want to go in a little bit. I'll get more permanence. I'll get more reliability. I'll get a deeper hold if I go a little deeper. How am I going to go deeper? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a grinder, and I'm simply going to grind a slot like this about halfway through this piece of metal here, about halfway up here like that. There we go. I'm going to grind it. <laughs> Did I put it in the wrong spot? There we go. I'm going to put it in about halfway up this piece of metal there. And then I'm going to weld into that channel. That's what I'm going to do. So I still get the holding power of this like <laughs> rivet, whatever that's called. Tell me in the comments, please, what that kind of industrial pressure joint is called. Uh, I'll still have some holding power on either side of the equation, so it's not like I'm grinding out these and trying to put them back in. And it's also not, I don't want to weld in here because this goes right up to the plate that it meets. So I need that uh, square corner of, up here. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set these up on my vise, grind out slots in each of these four, take them over to my welder, lay in a bead on both sides, grind it down a little bit. And I told Tracy that they may have to just do a little bit of excavating on the end of the bar to accommodate that. But uh, that that should take care of the problem. Now, yeah. here we go. There we go. Okay, this is indicative of what I'm talking about. See that? Ground down in the middle there. I'll lay a weld bead in there and all will be jake. Let's uh, grind out the other seven and then we'll go over to the welder. There we are. They are all, they are all ready. Let's go to the welder.
That is because I forgot to turn on the gas. That still looks okay because of the remaining gas in the system. Here, but not there. Whoops. All right, yeah, I got to grind those out and redo it. Go. I know they're not pretty. It'll do. It'll do. To the grinder. All right, um, I have my slightly ground, but nicely welded new bed, uh, new bed attachments. Uh, one thing you could see is, oh, it's not quite straight. It's not quite straight. So we're gonna fix that right now with just a little bit of um, anvil work. Excellent. Okay, so now I want to make sure I don't have anything sitting up on top there. Let's see here. These are not pretty repairs, but that's because they're never getting seen. Uh, sure, nice. And, oh. All right. Hopefully, uh, Tracy will send me a picture of these installed but uh, that's just a, a little bit of uh, just a little kind of the engineering problems I solved for my friends. Uh, thank you guys for joining me for this very quickie little thing. And uh, hopefully this is a shot of the bed frame actually going back together. All right. Thanks, guys.
I can't thank you enough for supporting us by watching the channel. If you've been to our merch store, you might want to head there again because we are always updating our roster with new products. Here is the anime-inspired Tested logo in Japanese, my, one of my all-time favorite new designs. Uh, we're also selling Tested mugs and Tested hats. Oh, and if you want a cup of tea, we're selling that too. Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com. <laughs>